But this time, I think we should uh, continue moving on. Let's go into multiple myeloma. And uh, basically, what we're going to have, I'll have Ivan and Madhav actually discuss this. Um, we have some interesting things happening in the field, definitely, and some updated data from even this meeting. Can we actually have uh, a discussion on the immune modulating agents for myeloma, potential combination with the new immune-based, uh, say, antibody-based therapies? Well, I'm going to start with you, Petra. So I think uh, the one big data that's going to come out actually for combination with immune modulated drugs is going to be the, the ilotuzumab uh, and revlimid dex backbone combination data, the eloquent 2 data, which is going to be presented, I think, a couple of days from now right. um, by Sagalonio. Yes. And that data is very exciting because, uh, as, as you know, we've been waiting for a monoclonal antibody in myeloma for quite some time. This is really in one of those ultimate uh, sort of ironies that the disease that you just mentioned led, led to the yes. discovery of antibodies in the, the first place, the hybridomas, right, right. had not had an antibody to itself uh, for, for therapy of the disease, um, but uh, we now have not just one, but in fact two or three antibodies that really show promise, um, ilotuzumab being one of them, and uh, certainly the eloquent data suggests that uh, where patients were randomized to uh, ELO-RD versus RD in the context of relapse refractory disease, that uh, the, both the progression-free survival rate as well as two or three, one, one or two-year uh, progression-free survival rate was clearly improved in the context of ELO-RD. So the response to the, the PFS data are like almost like 19 months versus 15 months, about a 30% reduction in, in hazard of hazard of survival. And the, the surface target, I guess, is CS1, so it's a unique target. Yeah, we like to use yes. the word SLAM F7 as, okay, a, as, gotcha. as opposed to CS1 for that. Gotcha. But, uh, but it, is, it is the, the It the sounds target. better, SLAM, you know, good <laughs> stuff, yeah. And then what about its mechanism of action? Can you mention uh, what is the mechanism of action of Ilantuzumab? So uh, ELO uh, basically obviously targets SLAM F7, which is expressed on myeloma cells, but also expressed on natural killer cells. Yeah. Um, and so uh, it actually can engage uh, both directly the myeloma cells, but more importantly, uh, can engage so can engage ADCC as as a, me as a mechanism of action, but also activates NK cells. So it has both a direct uh, the, the traditional effect, which is the FC receptor mediated and the ADCC effect, but also an effect on activating act, acting on NK cells to promote their. Uh, promote killing of myeloma cells. Is it via uh, ADCC with those activated NK cells, or does they also it's indirect a direct, effect? So we, so we think, uh, mm -hmm. although it's still sort of not fully worked mm -hmm. out, but it's thought that uh, because uh, SLAM F7 is expressed in NK cells, this probably could be a direct effect on NK cells that activates uh, NK via elotuzumab. Safety and efficacy uh, of uh, elo? Actually extremely well tolerated. Um, uh, the, the, the primary ad uh, adverse event, in fact, is infusion reactions. Uh, in about t 7 to 10 percent of cases, I think, in general, uh, mostly uh, lower grades, so grade 1 or 2. Gotcha. Uh, and we've gotten better in terms of being able to manage the infusion reaction. That's the common side effect of all antibodies True. in general. Um, so, so it's gotten a whole lot You better. mentioned that there's going to be presentation on the ELO uh, and uh, lenalidomide index. And there's another one, I guess, they're looking at, instead of len looking at bortezomib, another major drug. In myeloma, do you have any comments on that? Which sure. one do you think may be better, or worse, or so, both are effective? Well, basically. so I think they're both, in, in a way, positive studies. Uh, the ELO-RD versus RD trial is a bigger trial, better powered, um, and, um, and clearly uh, significant differences in, in PFS. I think the one, one, one important point to make there is also the fact that in, in that study in particular, uh, the PFS curves seem to separate over time. And that's actually kind of interesting because it also supports the concept of an immunologic mechanism of action. Um, but, uh, but, the, but, the, but the ELO, which is the, the Jakubowiak presentation that's also coming up sure. around the same time, uh, involve, compares uh, bortezomib dex versus bortezomib dex ELO, right. uh, which is a smaller randomized phase too. So, so it's actually only 70 patients per arm. Um, and um, the, the reduction in hazard ratio appears to be actually quite comparable, so about, still about 25-30% reduction. The p-values are sort of less impressive compared to the p-values in the, in the Eloquent 2 trial, but there could also be a, a reflection of the fact that it's a smaller study. Um, so, uh, however, biologically, at least to me personally, the Revlimid-Dex combination makes more sense. 
uh, in large part because Revlimid is, again, as we just mentioned earlier, is an immunomodulatory drug. This is a class of drugs that activates um, the NK cells. So you actually have two immunologically right. based therapies right. 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 that could actually have more synergistic activation. So I think, uh, personally, I find um, the ELO-RD to be a, a better combination than the Velcade RD. Velcade. Maybe we can just talk about, you know, the problem, I mean, it, it applies here, is with respect to study design. And what I bring up now is that uh, I've never been a, a, a proponent necessarily, and I have reasons for my, my opinion, at, in follicular lymphoma, for example, giving a long-term maintenance therapy, which really shows that you have a better progression-free, but no change in overall survival. I'm not sure what the ELO and the antibodies, do you continue the antibody indefinitely, or is it a set amount? Of, we don't really know how to optimally give these, especially there's differences poten potentially in different heme malignancies, of course, they're all unique. But in these trials, are they giving the ELO after they finish the uh, Lendex, after a certain number of cycles, or do you stop it all? It's, um, it's yes. actually given, it's given through until disease progression. So is that the best way of giving it? I, I really am wondering, because if we deplete the effector cell mechanisms and you've given it maybe concurrently, I've always wondered, when you give something that has synergy and you take the same thing that you gave in induction and you continue it indefinitely, is that just a recipe or a recipe for actually, you know, not success, but actually progression? Or, you know, I, I really don't know what is the time frame. How long do we need to continue these agents? Do you have any ideas, Brett? So, I mean, I think these are interesting questions. And, you know, as with all study designs, you have to pick one variable to test and, and, and you move for, forward uh, progressively. I think, you know, the interesting thing about uh, elotuzumab is that this yes. is an antibody that as single agent really did not have much activity. And That's it was only point. in combination yeah. with other drugs yeah. that we're beginning to see what I would argue to be rather impressive data. You know, as, as Madhav mentioned earlier, I think the surprise, certainly to the two of us that are more interested in the sort of the immune mechanism uh, with regard to a lot of these uh, treatments, yes. is that you're also seeing a somewhat equivalent effect with uh, bortezomib, which we all know is a, a significantly immunosuppressive drug. Yes. Yeah. So that would argue, I think, that the, that the so-called NK activity is maybe not as profound okay. as one would actually think, because I think it's fair to say that if that were one of the major mechanisms, um, the overall activity of... Uh, of, of EVD would uh, would be significantly less than ERD, yeah. um, and and I think getting to your question, you know, how long do you treat? Right. I mean, there is still a lot of preclinical data, and I think uh, BMS is trying to accumulate um, laboratory correlates to the current um, Eloquent two trial, which is a randomized trial we've been talking about to try to understand exactly what is happening to NK function. I mean, certainly we haven't seen an increase in, in lymphocyte numbers or necessarily in NK numbers, but you know, that, that may be irrelevant. I mean, they could a, be used up pretty quickly. Right. Or, if, or if the cell cells. itself is just becoming a more True. effective killer, then you, know, you don't need necessarily many more. Right. But I think you know, that isn't going to be the next step, is to try to understand what the mechanism of action is to help then moving forward to more rationally design the cry. Because you know, one other question that came up is once you've achieved mm -hmm. this response, you know, do you, well, do you need to continue with right. Revlimid and Dex? Do you just continue with Elotuzumab alone? Do you yes. continue with all three? Do you drop the Dex, which is also immunosuppressive? Immunosuppressive, yeah. I mean, the other idea...